Two absolutely massive games for us today. Manchester City, title rivals Manchester City in the Premier League. And then Inter Milan in the Champions League. And we are now at a point in the season where all of our new youngsters have been given debuts. And we're starting to piece together what this season's first choice team looks like. And it's exciting. Hello and welcome to part 14 of Gunning for Glory. I'm Kevin. coming up on today's episode. We are home against Manchester City in the Premier League, away against Inter Milan in the Champions League. Since you were last with me, we're on another one of these early season unbeaten runs. There have been a couple of blips, a 2-2 home draw against Chelsea with a late equaliser from Lacazette. That's right, Lacazette's already scored a couple of goals for us this season. He's not useless this year, um, but we rescued a draw against Chelsea, uh, which is fine. A home draw against Chelsea I can live with. What's Less good is having to rescue a late draw at home against Stoke um, with an Alex Awobi equaliser. He's also in very good form and pretty much making the position previously vacated by Alexis Sanchez on the left-hand side of our midfield attacking three. That's kind of his position now. But the most exciting thing of all is the emergence of Marco Asensio in the EFL Cup. He scored two goals, had an absolutely superb game. And has got a very strong shout to now be a regular starter in our team. Um, Premier League looks like this. Six games in. We're joint at the top with Manchester United on 14 points. Both of us unbeaten. But Man City are breathing down our necks. And know if they can beat us today. Not only do they ruin our unbeaten stuff. They'll also go top of the league themselves. We start our Champions League group with a solid win against Shakhtar with a heavily rotated team. Uh, Tar made his debut, Ian Acho made his debut, both of them scoring. Um, and we finally gave debuts to Cliver and Barbosa in the Brighton game. So everybody who we signed in the summer, with the exception of that defender from Man City, who's in, not from Man City, the one from Real Madrid who's injured. What's his name? Uh, Vallejo hasn't made his debut yet. Um, because he was, he's been injured. Even Sessegnon, though, played in the Champions League. So everybody has now played a game apart from the one who's injured. And this is the team that we're going to put out there to take on Manchester City. It's still not a first-choice team, I don't think. Um, I'm still trying to work out where to fit everybody in. Renato Sanchez has had a little run in the team in the last few games, but hasn't been that impressive average rating-wise, although he's everywhere on the pitch, which I really like. Um, and Bellerin probably would normally be our first choice right back, but he's just coming back from a slight knock that he got on the international break. So makes sense to play the two in-form centre-backs and just move Mustafi over to right back, which we did plenty of times last season. So our team today, we've got Testegen in goal, who, by the way, has already been injured twice. There are only little, little injuries. He's had blisters and a stubbed finger, but... Injury prone or just a little bit bad luck? He's not missed any games with injuries yet, but he's getting these little silly little injuries. And I think we probably need to keep a little bit of an eye on that. Why is Christensen not... What does he want to be at the back? He wants to be a ball-playing defender. What about Tar? Neither of them. They both want to be ball-playing defenders. Well, they're not going to be. We don't do... Oh, stupid, noisy chair. We don't do ball-winning midfielders. Ball-winning? Ball ball-playing defenders around these parts. So they can stay as normal or something like that. So, to stay getting goal, a back four of Monreal, Christensen, Ta and Mustafi with Xhaka and Ramsey. Pretty much our first choice midfield at the moment with Renato Sanchez sort of trying to push both of them very, very hard. And Diawara's had a couple of games as well. And then Danny Welbeck up front. He's got a goal a game so far this season. Danny Welbeck has has re-established his form from early on last season with Awobi, Asensio and Lamar behind him. Ozil starts from the bench today. Ian Acho um, had a good game in the Champions League, not so good in the league against Stoke. So he drops back down to the bench, as does Renato Sanchez. Theo Walcott, it still stings what he did to me last year. And I know you all say it wasn't his fault, but it would always be his fault. Um, right, we're going to win this game, fingers crossed. Eric Dyer plays for Man City now. And Griezmann does. Oh, good. This is going to be fun. Um, and they've got Aguero up front. So they've they've kept their world-class talents and added to them with more world-class talents. Whereas I've got rid of my world-class players and replaced them with Wonder Kids. So play this game again in five years' time, assuming we don't have to sell them all. We win it. Today, 
Not so sure, not feeling particularly confident. But Welbeck with a cross, and it won't be. There has, I mean, he's just missed an absolute sitter. I mentioned before that Alex awobi has been in great form so far this season. And um, that, I mean, he's missed a big chance there. But now finds Welbeck, and it fell to Asensio. And I don't know if that was a miss or a deflection. The fact it's a corner suggests it deflected away. It has been recorded as our second clear cut chance of the game, though. And I hope when, oh, cliche bingo, get your cards out. I hope we're not going to end up regretting those two quite big misses when it comes to the end of this match. Right, Xhaka to Mustafi. Tullamar, we're knocking the ball around nicely again. Ramsey to Iwobi. He finds us. He doesn't find Asensio. It gets intercepted, but we get the ball back and Mustafi's in behind. Crosses to Danny Welbeck. And that, is, oh, it's offside. I think that was quite a tight offside decision as well. I've seen more offside looking things than that be given, be not given in the past. I know what I mean. You know what I mean. Let's just do this unspoken communication that we can do now. Our relationship is that little bit deeper than it was before. Uh, right, let's let's try and win the game in the second half. Christensen to Asensio. And Asensio's not quite being the world beater that he was against Brighton. Now we're against Man City. He was absolutely exceptional in that game against Brighton. And I really hoped he'd carry it on in this Man City game. But he really hasn't so far. Welbeck is in behind again though. And that's our third clear-cut chance of the game. Not, I mean, that's a good save this time rather than a wasted opportunity. But still, three clear-cut chances, no goals. And we have been clinical so far this season. And it's all going a little bit, a little bit wrong in this game. Um, but we have got Ian Acho sat there on the bench, who, although we've signed him from Leicester after a successful season there, he's obviously a former Man City man. So there's always the whole he'll be really motivated to come on and score against his old club thing if we haven't scored in a couple of minutes. But look at that. It will be brilliant again, beating a couple of men. Probably should have squared it for either Welbeck or Asensio, who are waiting in the middle, but decides to have a shot. It goes wide and it's another good chance that goes begging and now City with a rare attack to Stegen I think punched clear it might have been Christensen with the header but City attack again Jack is in with the tackle though and Welbeck has to try and beat whoever their number four is for pace and he does it's Vincent company no wonder he beat him for pace he was racing an old man and it slots it into let's call it the top corner until the 3D replay confirms otherwise so it is Welbeck against company there was only going to be one winner in that race and it was Welbeck and then almost top quarter it goes over the top of Edison and that's the important thing right substitution time Asensio getting the assist there presumably because his rating absolutely shot up so the plan that was to take off Asensio we put on the back burner again for a little minute I think we'll change up Awobi and Lamar so Ozil's going to come on for one of them um, Theo Walcott will come on for the other and we'll just switch this all around a little bit We've done that shape a number of times before. Really, let me know down in the comments. I'm thinking it might be time to just bin Walcott. And, because at the moment, he's stopping both Barbosa and Clivert from getting onto the bench as a like out-and-out winger option on the bench. And although he's probably better than both of them right now as an impact sub off the bench, we're probably better off having one of our wonder kids, aren't we? Right, um, we're going to take off Xhaka, bring on Renato Sanchez. Just swap those two over because Sanchez, I really like the way he plays as a box-to-box -box midfielder. Um, his ratings don't seem to be showing it yet, but he has been absolutely everywhere. I really, really like the way he plays. Um, did Welbeck just score again? I thought that one was going to be disallowed as well, but it's Ramsey with the ball forward. Ozil gets in behind, a little bit fresh, competing for a place, tucks it across to Welbeck. And Danny Welbeck, I tell you is in form again. If we can just keep... He was like this at the start of last season. We just need to keep him in this kind of form. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, Danny. I was going to skip that, but didn't have to in the end. Um, right, Walcott to Ozil. Welbeck again in for his hat-trick, and it's a poor shot straight at their keeper. We have now had five clear-cut chances to their none. 19 shots to their six. We've had more possession. Our passing's been better. Our tackling's been better. Our heading is better. We've completely outclassed Manchester City today. And as it stands right now, we are top of the league, although we are playing earlier. I think this is a Friday night game. But youth is destroying experience at the moment. But I guess experience is more likely to have consistency over the course of the season. And as we saw last year, and as Arsenal fans are probably used to by now, 
we don't play like this all year. Renato Sanchez forces the save out of the City keeper. And it's not gone down as a clear-cut chance. It was a pretty good chance. 22 shots now in this game. And we're playing really rather well. World Cup to Welbeck. And it goes over. And that should be that. A comfortable 2-0 win against Manchester City. And our two wonder kid centre-backs have completely taken care of Sergio Aguero. Aguero, I can say Aguero, I can say his name, um, but they've just looked after him all game between the two of them. Um, they've, they've not looked troubled at any point, and I could, I'm just, I'm having nightmare flashbacks of how he might have been against Mertesacker, and I think we made the right call. But that, that's a big, big win, and now we need to go and get an equally big win against Inter in the Champions League. Right, a few changes for the Inter game because we've got a big squad of good players and I like to shuffle the pack regularly to try and keep them all fit. So Koscielny comes back in at centre-back with Christensen dropping down to the bench. Bellerin comes in from Mustafi at right-back. Uh, Danny Welbeck's dropping back to the left wing with Iwobi dropping down to the bench. So Lacazette can start and Ozil is in for Asensio. Hopefully that's not too many changes for one game. Uh, but Lacazette's moaning that he's not getting enough opportunity. And he has had, in the couple of games that he's played, a good start to the season. So I want to give him the opportunity against real top quality opposition. But in a game I'm not that bothered about. Because we're not going to win the Champions League this year. The Champions League this year is all about getting some Champions League experience. So it's not a disaster if we go away to Inter and lose. But it will be interesting to see how Lacazette performs. If Lacazette goes here and grabs a goal or grabs a couple of goals then we know we have to take him seriously. If he doesn't, then I think I'm probably happy to to put him on the, the list of players. Not the transfer list. I've learnt that lesson from yesterday's video. But on Kev's unwritten list of players that he'll happily let move on in the summer um, and just focus on Welbeck and Ian Acho and Barbosa and Cliver and all these other players that we've got who can play centre-forward and uh, perhaps give up on the Lacazette experiment that didn't work at all last year. But... He's calling it the Lacazette experiment. He might be about to score a hat-trick against Inter, in which case um, we regret signing Barbosa because we spent a lot of money on him and can't even get him on the bench at the moment. Clive has a little bit of a different issue because he's a little bit younger and not as good currently. He's still got a lot of potential, but we could probably do with sending Clive on loan. He's realistically not going to get anywhere near our team all year. Future Kev, enjoy quoting that one when he scores in the Champions League final. Because he'll be the player. Oh, he's the man. But right now, I don't see him getting anywhere near our team anytime soon. Because I was stupid and signed Barbosa. So double stupid. Two different reasons. Right, here is Lacazette's chance. This one doesn't count, by the way. If he scores this, it's just a penalty. If he misses it, it tells me a lot, though. I feel like I've been told a lot. Um, right, Ozil with the corner. And it's cleared. Lacazette chasing back again. I mean, he is quickly becoming a bit of a Kev scapegoat. You know I like to have a scapegoat. And I just, I find it so difficult to get a good performance out of him. We clearly don't play in a way that suits the way Lacazette wants to play. And if he was 19 years old, then we'd perhaps look into retraining him and giving him time to develop. But he's, what, 26, 27? If he's not already the finished article and ready to be a world beater at that age then it really is time to move him on. Ozil grabs us the equaliser, though, and that's significant. Um, but I'm already thinking, not long into the second half, we're probably going to bring Ian Acho on for Lacazette, give him another run out in the Champions League, um, because Lacazette, I mean, goodness me, that's that's just a really, really poor performance. We'll give him 10 minutes, maybe. It's unheard of for Kev to make a, a 55th minute substitution, but I feel like I need to send a message. What formation are into playing? One moment. That that looks strikerless to me. Unless they're playing with four actual forwards, which I don't think you can do at the moment. It's also interesting. They've got 12, 13, 14 all lined up along each other, alongside each other up front. But I mean, are they allowed is the AI allowed to use exploit tactics like strikerless? I feel like if they're doing that then I should be allowed to do the 4-3-1-2 for this game and just absolutely smash him. That'll get Lacazette scoring. That'll suit him down to the ground. Play him and Welbeck alongside each other with Ozil in behind and we're just going to absolutely destroy teams. But this whole exploit striker... Oh, I didn't... Oh, in all the kerfuffle, I've left Lacazette on the pitch as well. They've distracted me. Right, Ian Acho's on. Um, 
I don't think it's an early enough change to send the message to Lacazette that I wanted to send. But a couple of you have mentioned before, have a private chat with him and tell him to sort his life out. But I'm of a view of if he can't sort his own life out without me telling him, he's not the kind of player I want at the club. I went all the way through non-Leeds legend this year without having to do private chats. So I don't feel the need to start doing them now. If a player is not going to perform, he can go and play for a different team. Right, Asensio can come on. He gets another opportunity because, he, like I say, he was really, really good in the game against Brighton, but a little bit absent against Man City. But here's his opportunity with Ian Acho in front of him. Lots and lots of pace and three players behind the pace who can play awesome through balls. So, in theory, that should all work out rather nicely. And we'll just take off Ramsey, bring on Sanchez, swap those two over. Look at that. It's a midfield. Both fully comfortable with the roles I'm asking him to play. I mean, that might have a bit of a future in it, that midfield. Um, but we've got Diawara there as well, who long-term, I see Diawara and Sanchez as my midfield too. And we'll look to move both Xhaka and Ramsey on once we've brought in a couple of extra ones to sort of slot in behind them on the conveyor belt. But that's what it's all about here at Arsenal. We're conveyor belting. We're, we're, trying, to, we're trying to run a, a net profit, <laughs> he says, having spent £500 million in two seasons. Like I said, losing this game, not a big deal. We should still get out of our group. And as long as we get out of our group, that's all the board have asked me to do. We don't need to... We've not got any ambitions to win the Champions League this year. We we know we're a work in progress at the moment. So, an established Champions League late-stage team like Inter, who I realise have got their issues, but I'm trying to talk myself around and feel better. Um, we're top of the Premier League. That's the important thing. The Lacazette experiment didn't really work, did it? It was a mild autumnal evening, though, and that's the main thing. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you pop a like on there for me. Subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more. And thank you very much for watching.